And we ain't got time for that. Like I said, we put in all this work, you know, during the winter, that during the summer, we want to show off, a lot of us, want to show off what we have worked so hard for. Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back. I want to say a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening to all of my subbies. And I want to send the same out to all my newbies. And just in case you don't know what a newbie is and you are looking around just, just a little confused, well, I'm about to tell you. A newbie, be anybody checking me out, maybe for the first time, maybe for the third, maybe for the fifth, sixth. Honey, we don't count around here. We, we really don't. I just want all of my subbies and I want all of my newbies, no matter what time of day you happen to be watching me, I need y'all to get it together and come on in, come on in, come on in. Okay, so for today, today we got a, today we just, we, we got some a remedial class, if you will. Summer is coming. Summer is right around the corner. Some of us are feeling it already. And it's time to go over a little review as far as some of the bad hair combos. No sense in us getting lax in that department as far as our regimen is concerned. I know for a lot of us, we tuck our hair away during the winter. Like bears in hibernation, mm -hmm. we hibernate our hair during the winter. And then as it gets warmer, we slowly let it peak out. We slowly but surely start to show it off just a, a little bit more, just a little bit more. So with that being said, it's no sense in us resting on our hair laurels when it comes to our regimen. We got to keep everything in tip top shape, honey, because we have worked too hard to get to where we are to fall back now. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So with that being said, we are just going to do a quick review of some hair combos, some bad hair combos that can apply to both natural and relaxed. Some no-nos, some eh -ehs, and some don't you do it. Yes, yeah, some of those. Some of the pairings or combinations that don't work well for our hair. And we need to keep these things in mind overall. So without any further ado, we're just gonna jump right to it, okay? And get into the list of things that, that just popped into my head that I want to share, because you know how we do around here. We like to share because sharing is caring. So, and this is in no particular order, but I'm gonna start off with some softballs for you. Some things that we, we should already be familiar with and all of these things we should already not be doing, but I'm gonna lob some softballs to you guys starting out. And the first one is relaxers and bleach or relaxers and permanent color. Now I know I talked about this about a couple of a couple of videos ago, but it bears repeating. We do not want to do more than one chemical process on our hair, especially bleach. Bleach and relaxers do not mix. They don't. And permanent color, that's a harsh process because you're stripping your hair of its natural color and then depositing this new color in its place. And of course, that process is very harsh and very and can be very damaging, both to relaxed gals and naturals. But especially for relaxed gals, because we already have a chemical in our hair. We are more susceptible to breakage and damage with permanent color on top. You guys know that commercial with the bounty paper towel and how it's wet and how if you put more stuff on a wet paper towel, it's gonna fall right through? Well, that would be our hair. Our hair, the more processing you do to it, the weaker it can become. So it's best just to leave, leave that stuff alone. So if you're gonna do any color for the summer and, and you're thinking of some new ideas and new ways of showing off your do with a new hue, then semi and demi permanent are the way to go. And also, like a lot of us, including me, the sun tends to, tends to color my hair for me. My hair tends to get lighter and I get streaks like right above my ears. Like this section right here, I get streaks that almost frame my face. So there is that as well. But permanent color and bleach, 
Uh -uh. Don't you do it. So these next few tips are, are putting the spotlight on relaxed gals with fresh, relaxing, and braids. Now, a lot of us, we don't want to be bothered with our hair during the summertime. It's hot, it's sweaty, we want it off our neck, or we want it basically already taken care of without having to take care of it daily. So with that being said, a lot of us get braids. You know, it's, it's neat for traveling. You don't have to fuss and fight over it. It is a convenience, but don't get it twisted, honey. A fresh relaxer and braids are no bueno. You don't want that combination. With a relaxer, of course, your hair has already gone through a process and being freshly relaxed, it's already straight to the point where any extra tension on it can cause breakage. So you want a little bit of give. You want your roots to have a little bit of spring to them so that they can cushion and allow for that slight tugging and pulling when you get your braids or cornrows. Just imagine elastic rubber band and it being pulled until it's taut. It has reached its capacity for tension. That's your relaxed hair. Now, you know, the more that you pull it past its capacity, past its tolerance, that it can snap. So with that being said, you don't want anything pulling and tugging at your scalp, at your roots, because that can damage your hair and it can also lead to hair loss. And we ain't got time for that. Like I said, we put in all this work, you know, during the winter, that during the summer, we want to show off, a lot of us, want to show off what we have worked so hard for. As well as some of us, we just like to have simple styles during the summer that may keep it up or away from our faces and our necks. You know, we like to live the simple life. So for all those who choose braids as that option, you may wanna wait about two weeks after a relax, two to three weeks, that's what I would do. But you wanna wait a couple of weeks after getting your hair relaxed before going to braids or cornrows. And sort of in the same perimeter of that, we don't want to relax freshly washed hair. Now, I know most of us relaxed girls, we already know this, but again, we, we just gonna repeat it because some of us get, some of us can get a little lax and we can get a little anxious and we just want our hair just to be fresh and done without even thinking about the timeliness of it. So with that being said, you do not want to relax hair that has just been washed. And I'm not just talking about just that day. You want to wait at least a week I wait a full week before I relax my hair after washing it because I wash my hair weekly. So once I wash and I know that my relaxer day is coming up, I wait that full seven days before even touching it. Because those oils that you have accumulated during that week or during those days between the wash and the relaxer, that's actually going to work in your favor. That's actually gonna act as a cushion on your scalp, as a protectant on your scalp, in addition to any type of protectants that you put on your scalp, as far as a base. You guys know that I don't base my scalp. But again, it's good to have that barrier between the chemical and your skin. And your natural oils are the perfect barrier for that. As well as your hair. Once you have washed your hair, you know, you're washing the accumulation of oils and dirts off of it. So it's gonna be more stripped, it's gonna be more bare. And again, putting a relaxer on top of clean hair, that strips it even more. So you definitely want that buffer. You want that buffer to protect your strands while going through the chemical process of relaxing. Okay, so I got one more softball for you. Bristle brushes and wet hair. Don't do it. I already told you guys, this is a million videos ago when I had the bright idea of brushing my hair with a bristle brush mm -hmm, while it was wet. Mm -hmm to make it smoother, mm-hmm. And honey, when I tell you I had breakage all up in my crown, it, it looked like it was a halo, a halo of broken hairs, and, and it, it was a mess. It was a costly lesson. Do not use a bristle brush on wet hair. Again, we're talking about elasticity. Again, we're talking about tension and having all that tension 
pull on your wet hair when the elasticity is already very loose anyway, then that can cause breakage. And that's why when I do my hair, those who are initiated, you know that I use a rubber brush. It has less teeth on the brush or less bristles and the bristles themselves are nylon. Okay, so therefore it's not really grabbing my hair and pulling and giving it tension. There's more grace to it. As far as using a nylon brush or a comb or a comb versus a bristle brush. The bristle brushes, they're more dense and therefore they're going to really capture that hair and pull it. Meanwhile, the nylon brushes, rubber brushes and combs there's not as much tension because they're not dense. Those teeth are more spread apart and therefore are not pulling and tugging as much. So I'm just letting y'all know, if y'all don't want a halo against uh, uh, atop your head, and I'm not talking about angelic, I'm talking about the, of the broken hair persuasion, then don't do it. It's not worth it. Now, speaking of tension, okay, because I still see people use these types of rollers and it really, it, it really makes me cringe. It really does. The spiky rollers. Now, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, it's a roller, so you roll your hair up with it, but it has these little spikes on them so it can catch your hair. They come in all different sizes, and I know a lot of people use them for something quick. That way they don't have to go to or resort to bobby pin. So these rollers do, do both. Not only do they, they roll your hair or give you a curl, but also they stay in place via the spikes or bristles or teeth on the rollers. They stay in place that way. And I would just say to be careful with that, I personally would never even use anything like that. And again, I've seen this as a quick remedy, you know, even on a professional level when dealing with models and, and actors and they have to be, you know, ready very quickly. I've even seen it in salons, especially with older people and they have the little wet set and they do that instead of putting the bobby pins because of course under a hot dryer you don't really want metal up against your skin while your your your, your hair and, and your skin is exposed to heat. That's a no bueno time be in. So with that being said, I would guard against the usage of these particular rollers because it can tangle in your hair. These rollers may be hard to get out as well as in doing so it can cause breakage and again we are anti-breakage around here we like to keep up with our trims and the handling of our hair we want to be very careful so that it does not lead to these calamities now i don't know why anyone would do this we've already been over this but believe it or not, sometimes when people are in a rush, they, they don't, they don't, they don't include this. Heat protectant is a must. It really is. Heat protectant is going to protect your hair while you are using heat tools, such as flat irons, curlers, you name it. You do not want to style your hair with heat without a heat protectant. And that could be a serum, that could be a spray, that could be a type of oil, an oil that's specific for hair and heat, but you need that buffer. You need that protectant on your hair to guard against it being damaged because it only takes one time. It only takes one time to make a mistake and cause damage to your hair. So you need to take all the precautions on the front end so you're not doing a triage session on the back end. And one of those vital things is always having heat protectant on your hair. As well as a lot of these protectants and finishers, they have UV protection in it as well. So that's from the sun, you know, in the UV rays, we're supposed to be protecting all skin and protecting your hair as well will definitely bode well for its health. So please use a heat protectant. Your hair will thank you. And speaking of protecting and protecting us against the sun and the elements that, that comes along with all, all the hotter weather, now that it's getting warmer, I know we are trying to go to the beach. We are trying to show off that summer body, some of us, as well as our summer hair or new hairstyles. 
So that would include going to a pool and or going to the beach or whatever is clever as far as your particulars and how you spend your summer. So with that being said, as far as pools are concerned, you don't want to expose your hair to chlorine. Chlorine is a chemical and anybody who has a relaxer, anybody who has color in their hair, as well as naturals, but of course those who have some type of chemical in their hair, whether it's color or relaxers, again, we're a little more prone to these things as far as damage, but the chlorine from the pool can damage your hair. So that would be no bueno. So what a lot of us do, we wear caps, we wear swim caps. I remember years ago when I was, oh, I was, I was pretty young, I was learning how to swim. And my mom bought us these swim caps, they were white and they were real tight on your head. You know, and it wasn't too cute, it, it wasn't. But nowadays they have a lot of stuff that, that's really more fashion friendly. I mean, they have stepped up their game as far as swim caps, they really have. I mean, not only do they come in different colors, but they got the old school or the throwbacks with the flowers on top, which are really cute. I was thinking about getting one for myself. I'm just, I'm just saying. As well as they have these big swim caps that can accommodate locks and natural hair and natural hair styles. So they sort of look like a bonnet, but of the swim cap persuasion. You, you see what I'm saying? So they fit right here and then they allow, they have an allowance, the space allowance, for all of your hair. So there's a lot to choose from nowadays. And in addition to that, I have seen, now I'm not a swimmer, so I'm not an avid swimmer. I do not go to the pool and, and do all that other stuff. But for those who do, I have heard that either in addition to or as protection on their hair when they're at the pool or at a beach, they put conditioner in their hair before getting into the water. Now again, I'm not a swimmer, I have not tried this for myself, but I've heard from quite a few people that this has helped to mitigate any type of damage that they would have incurred by just going into the pool without it on their hair. So again, this is for naturals and relaxed. And anybody who has done that and has tried that and can testify to the efficacy as far as how that worked for them, just let us all know down below because I'm curious myself. I plan on doing a, a little bit more in the water, mm -hmm. a just a little bit more, just a little bit more for this summer. And uh, I'm going to look into that because you do have the chlorine or the salt water option as far as pools. And you know that a lot of oceans and seas, they, they have salt in them as well. So that can dry and be an irritant to your hair. But that chlorine, you really want to watch out for that chlorine and that chemical reaching your, your, your strands. Because we know that even those with color in their hair, it can turn your color. Over time, it can cause damage to your color and either have it fade quicker or turn a whole different color. So it's good to keep that in mind as well. But honey, for the summertime, it's all about fun, frolicking, sun, and protection. So we're talking about our hair, our skin. We're talking about everything, honey. You can have fun in the sun, but make sure you are prepared. You got to be prepared before you expose your hair to certain stylings and, and profilings during the summer month and every month, okay? And every month. I'm just saying for summer, some of us like to show off and, and it may be the reverse for some. Some of us like to tuck it away during the summer as well. But these are precautions that apply to naturals and relaxed and all across the board. We are talking about the bad hair combos, the no buenos that we do not want to partake in in these upcoming months or, 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 or ever. And I just wanted to share that with all of you because like I said, don't make me repeat myself, because I will. Because sharing is caring and that is what we do around here. So now that we have cared to share, we are gonna get up out of here. What do you think? I think we should, honey. So that's what we're about to do. So with that being said, that wasn't too bad, right? We were in and out, okay? I wanna thank you so much for dialing in and showing up. I really do appreciate it. I really do. I really do. 
And yeah, we'll be back talking about some more stuff. Honey, I need y'all to come on back in here so we can talk about some more stuff. So you gotta come back for that. So you already know. It's going to be the same Dolce Dial. It's going to be the same Dolce Channel. So you come on back.